Welcome to part two of the hotspot setup video for DMR using the Brandmeister network. In this video, I am going to be programming up the radio using the programming software. And then I'm also going to be showing you how to use the radio. So I've started here with a completely blank code plug, if you like to call it that. And uh, for those who don't know, code plug just kind of means the programming that you're going to put on the radio. Uh, so this is completely blank. Um, and the first thing I'm going to go and do is put my ID in here. Uh, so this is my ID number. So this is uh, mapped to my own call sign. So obviously you're going to have to put your DMR ID in there. If you don't have one already, then you can go and look at my DMR IDs video. And just in case there's anyone watching this who is not very knowledgeable about amateur radio and stuff, this is for those who have an amateur radio license already. If you don't have one already, then you're not going to be able to use a hotspot in this way. The next thing we're going to want to do is go over to the digital contact page of settings, and we're going to want to program in a few talk groups. So when someone says talk group, it means a group call. So we have to make sure it's set to group call for these. And I'm going to program in, let's say worldwide which is a very busy talk group on Brandmeister and the talk group number is 91. I'm also going to program in uh, let's say United Kingdom and that is 235 and let's say we also want to program in TAC 310 which is another common talk group and the number for that is 310. Now I'm also going to program in a private call, which is going to be the echo call. So if you talk into this one, it will just play the audio back to you. And that's useful for checking that your own audio is working and it's at the right volume. So I'm going to call it echo. And the number for that one is 9990. So the next thing to do is head over to the channel information section. Just click on the plus to expand that. And here we've got the default channel that's already in there. I am going to change this channel so that it's programmed up ready for my hotspot. So obviously select it onto the digital mode. Change the frequency to whatever frequency your hotspot is on. So that is the frequency I'm using at the moment. Make sure to change both of them. The RX and TX frequencies. I recommend you put the admit criteria on color code because that stops you from talking on top of anyone else. And I also recommend you set the transmit power to low because the hotspot only transmits at a very low power as well. So there's not really much point transmitting at 5 watts when you're not going to be able to hear the hotspot from far enough away for it to matter. The other thing to check is the color code. So just make sure that that is set the same as you have on the hotspot. By default, it's usually on one, so normally you can just leave it. The repeater slot doesn't matter at all on hotspots, or at least on simplex hotspots. If you get a duplex hotspot, then it might be different. But on the simplex ones, you can set it to either of these. Uh, really doesn't matter because there's nothing to synchronize it and tell the radio which time slot is which. So it really doesn't matter. Now, those are the basic settings for the channel set. And the only other thing we're going to be changing here now is going to be the contact name. So what you're going to do is copy this channel. And then on this programming software, the way to paste a channel is actually to add a new one and then paste it on top of that one. And I'm going to do it again and again. So we now have one channel for each of the contacts we programmed in. And then I'm going to go through these channels and put that contact for each of them. So worldwide, and I'm going to call it worldwide. And then this one's going to be UK. And finally, Now the next thing we need to do to get it to work is go into zone information and just make sure that these channels are in a zone. So 
the zone is just kind of like a folder on a computer. It's a way of organizing the talk groups. So this zone I'm going to call hotspot. So you might have a zone for hotspot and then you might have, let's say another zone for analog repeaters like that. And then you could go on, on the radio and select which zone you want to be on. So I'm going to put all of the talk groups that I just made into here. And on this particular radio, uh, it has it treats the two lines on the display separately. But on most radios, it won't have this separate section here. So you can just ignore that and focus on this bit. So now that they are added to the zone, we'll be able to see them on the radio. And there's just one more thing that I recommend doing before you program it onto the radio. Uh, this is up to you whether you want to do this or not, but I always like to do this. So what you do is program up a group list with all of the talk groups you've just programmed in, in that group list. And the purpose of doing that is that if you have this group list assigned to the channel, then when you're on that channel, any group that's in that group list will be received. Otherwise, if you're on, let's say, this channel here, it will only receive on the worldwide group. If any other group is transmitted by the hotspot, it just won't hear it. So if you put the group list on, then it will hear any of the groups in that list. So what I'm going to do is set the group list on each of these. And then just make sure that they're in that group list. So to do that, it's in this section here. There's the group list. And you can only add talk groups to a group list. You can't add private calls because a private call just goes to the ID that you've put as the number. So the only way to receive a private call to a particular ID is to have that set as your own ID. That's why we can't add private calls to a group list. So now that that's all done, I think we're about ready to program it onto the radio. So just click on the right button, make sure that the radio is plugged in and hopefully it should work. Okay, so here we are on the radio and this radio has two lines. I'm gonna turn off the bottom one for now just so we can focus on one of them so as not to complicate things. So you can see that the talk groups that I programmed in are in there and ready to use. So the first thing I'm gonna try is using the echo contact. 2E0KZA, just testing the hotspot, one, two, three. Let's see if that comes back, it should do. 2E0KZA, just testing the hotspot, one, two, three. Yep, so that's pretty good. Um, and then I'm going to go on to one of the other talk groups. Three. So I haven't got any of these programmed in as static talk groups at the moment. They're only dynamic. So even if someone is talking on one of these talk groups here, one. I won't hear it because I haven't keyed up on that talk group to activate it. So if I activate worldwide just by keying up on it, then we'll probably hear someone talking because worldwide is really busy, talk group 91 there's usually someone talking on there. So all I have to do is key up on it briefly. So I think, and, uh, you oh, know, there you go. We, sh we should all voice our opinions, actually. To see if you you can see that there's someone talking on there already. Um, and that was activated as soon as I pushed the push to talk button there. So you can see that's uh, worked quite nicely. That is ready to use with the hotspot now. And that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more video content like this one. And also don't forget to give the video a like. That would be much appreciated if you found it useful.